Hands down, the question I get asked the most, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube comments is why does my potting soil insert whatever phrase you desire? This could be has gnats, doesn't hold water, holds too much water, doesn't contain fertilizer, and everything else in between. So today I'm going to give you a complete guide on potting soil, what you should choose for your situation, and how complex and how much science can actually go into potting soil. It's it's quite shocking. Bit of background here, I have a degree in soil science, so I know what plants need when it comes to growing medium to be healthy um, in respects to physical attributes, chemical attributes, you name it. The true test when it comes to potting soils in particular was when I worked in a research greenhouse. We had to choose what potting soil would work best in small four by four nursery pot containers under constant irrigation and a constant fertilizer supply. And then very recently, I had the privilege of being a speaker at the CSPMA. So if you don't know what that is, it's a Canadian Sphagnum Moss Association. They are a very cool group of scientists and industry that are trying to make peat more sustainable. And also because Canada is the leading expert on peat bog reclamation, trying to spread the message of how to reclaim bogs that have been damaged in Europe, uh, particularly the UK, which has triggered kind of that whole spiral effect of um, banning peat in the UK, et cetera, and so forth. They didn't do a good job uh, with managing their peat bogs. Canada is one of the leaders in this and they're internationally known for how good we are at it. If you missed the podcast I did with several people that are in the CSPMA as well as in the industry, then please do check Check that out if you want to learn more. But I, when I was there, I got to speak to media scientists. So scientists who work on media that makes up a potting soil or why we would choose different grades of peat. It was really nerdy stuff. If you guys want to learn more about that, then please comment down below. But through that, I gained a little bit more insight into how much science goes into formulating a potting soil. I think I'm okay <laughs> to talk about this with you guys with a uh, certain degree of certainty um, or education in this field. So number one is that there are, regardless if it's peat or coconut coir, whatever the case is, there are different grains. And so there are professional mixes and then there are just the mixes you very commonly see at Walmarts or Canadian Tires. Now, don't get me wrong, Canadian Tires do, and Walmarts, I think, do sell the professional grade mixes. Home Depot does, greenhouses definitely do. But the big difference between these two is kind of the difference that we even see when, if you're a tea drinker, for example, Example. So there are teas that are very, they're loose leaf and they're curated and they're whole parts, delicious tasting. And then there's kind of that bottom of the barrel leftover tea type stuff, like the Lipton and that sort of thing. If you're a tea connoisseur, you know what I'm talking about. The bottom of the barrel, shredded within an inch of its life, kind of whatever's left over teas. That is the equivalent to like the Miracle Grows or the No Name Potting Soil mixes. Whereas the professional mixes is very curated, lots of science, a lot of effort goes into it. Now, if this turns you off or you get frustrated, pick whichever you want. You can grow in nearly anything. This does not pertain to you have to pick this professional mix over that mix. You can buy the cheaper mix. Just get it if you are completely confused on what you need. Now, when you work in a greenhouse setting, or more particularly, if you work in food production, because if you did not know, potting soil, 
pine saw companies, you and me are small potatoes to these people. The bulk of their product actually goes to greenhouse settings, particularly food production. So there are a ton of different vegetables that are grown in greenhouses that are not grown outdoors. And those ones are grown in potting soil. And the potting soil that is used is a professional grade mix based on what they need. So they will use either the Sunshine or the SunGrow uh, professional mixes or the Pro Mix professional mixes. I don't know of many other Pro Mixes out there that do the big bulk quantities for these uh, greenhouse setting areas. But if you know of any, please comment them down below. Now, today's video in no way is sponsored by ProMix or SunGrow. I just wanna say that right now because I'm going to be referencing their product lines repeatedly throughout this video only because that's what you need to purchase to get the results that we're about to speak about. Category one is just regular potting soil, consumer grade we'll call. And that is your miracle Grow, your no name, um, Walmart brand, greenhouse brand mix over in this department. On this side, we have the professional mixes, which have a ton of different characteristics. What these two do have in common is they will always have some form of dolomite lime or gypsum, and that's what sets them apart from a homemade mix that you just kind of buy off Etsy or whatever the case is, because these are, uh, they do have pH buffering agents in them, because pH, we've talked about that at length on this channel, is incredibly important for nutrient uptake. And so both the consumer mixes and the professional mixes do have dolomite lime and gypsum to buffer the pH, and that is important must have ingredient and that is why I do encourage you to buy a potting soil, consumer grade or professional, over making your own unless you have the equipment to properly make your own with the pH buffering agents in it. So the first one is just a basic mix. It's properly sifted, so the particulate sides are all even. Um, it has the correct amounts of perlite necessary and also some form of all-purpose fertilizer kind of in the mix. And that'd be Sunshine Mix number one. Or the other option would be the Pro Mix, which is BX or CX. BX is peat-based, CX is choir-based, and that's going to be a very common theme throughout all of this. So the next one is Sunshine Mix number two. Now this one I don't recommend to most regular people because this is a no nutrient peat and perlite only mix um, with the dolomite lime and the gypsum. It allows you to customize your fertilizer additions. The application in which this would be used is if you were doing some form of research on fertilizer or nutrient uptake, if you needed some sort of a control in a research setting, or you worked in a greenhouse that had fertilizer kind of in the irrigation systems and you have a very specific set of NPK micronutrients that you wanted added to that soil every time it was watered, the control is the Sunshine Mix number two because it is absent of all fertilizer. I couldn't find the Pro Mix professional version of that, unfortunately, but I'm sure they have one. I just don't know what it is. Sunshine mix number three. So this one applies to absolutely anyone who does soil blocking, plugs, or just in general is looking for a firm, aggregated potting soil while seed starting. The Pro Mix version of this is the PGX Pro Mix is specific to plugs and germination. Meaning, if you have a soil blocker, this is the stuff you wanna use. You don't wanna do the homemade, whatever crazy mixture they have. This stuff is the stuff you want. The reason for that is it has, it has plug grade peat and plug grade vermiculite. And those are very two very specific grades of medium. So the peat medium, the fibers are short, very short peat fiber. The vermiculite is almost like a fine dust compared to the vermiculite that I've shown you in the past. It's the grade of these two products, the mixture of them together that allows that aggregation. The other key factor we find in this germination 
Nutrition slash Plug Mix is very low fertilizer, which is exactly what seedlings need to be healthy and happy. If you ever get stretching or legginess, it's either your lights and or the fact that your mix is too intense in nutrients. Seedlings do not need that extra nitrogen. It just makes a mess of everything. Okay, so the next one is ProMix FLO. Sunshine Mix doesn't have an equivalent to this. This is a pro mix all on its own. And this applies to anyone that lives in an area that has alkaline water. So Saskatchewan, Saskatoon has alkaline water. My pH is at around an eight once it comes out of the tap. So I encourage you to test what your water is sitting at. This continual exposure to alkaline water in and of itself can slowly alter the pH in the long term. Now, it, and that's regardless of it having lime or gypsum or any sort of pH buffer in that mix. Now, if you had a potting soil that was in an indoor setting, like a house plant, or like an indoor vegetable growing situation where you're continually reusing that potting soil long term, you may want to consider this FLO ProMix product if you have alkaline water. If it's something you're using one time um, to start seeds or in a hanging basket that you're just going to throw out, whatever the case is, you probably don't have to get this FLO version. You could just go with a regular potting soil. So essentially all it has is it has less calcatic limestone in it, which is something we commonly see in the rest of the potting soils. And this just allows us to buffer a pH that is slightly alkaline um, that's being added continually. What I will say is typically speaking, most fertilizers, when you add them to a pH of nine, example, tap water, it does reduce it, it does bring that pH down. So if you're adding liquid fertilizers or um, granular dissolved in liquid, you probably aren't watering it in H, you're probably watering below that. Sunshine mix number four. Now this one is my absolute favorite. This I've spoken about for years and essentially what it is is it's a high porosity. The pro mix version is just the HP version. Um, there's also HP plus mycorrhizae and sunshine mix number four also has a mycorrhizal uh, version. And all this is is jumbo perlite larger peat fibers, little zero vermiculite. And the purpose for it is very fast draining. It works wonderfully in houseplant scenarios. It also works wonderfully in vegetable outdoor growing scenarios in the event you have larger size containers and you don't need much moisture retention. The other case where you would use this is if you have plants or if you have plants that are sensitive to salts. So, salinity sensitivity uh, will show up in some plants out there. Promix number four helps prevent against that because it's so fast at draining, all that excess salt gets washed out very quickly. The other case where you may wanna use sunshine mix number four is if you're new to gardening um, and you're not 100% sure how to fertilize, you're using liquid fertilizers, a fail safe is a fast draining potting soil and sunshine mix will help reduce the likelihood of you over fertilizing if you just aren't quite sure yet. So there are versions, other versions of fast draining in the pro mix line. So there's the BK and then there also is the BRK as well as the HPCC. So if it has a B, it's peat. If it has a C, it's quar. And essentially all these ones are is that they're peat mixed with some sort of bark. Um, this that's aged, usually wood, and it has the gypsum, the dolomite, that sort of thing. It's your classic chunky mix, but in an, a professional setting. So this I don't see being used in the garden very often. You could use it in your house plants. In particular, the BRK, which has the nitrogen stabilizer in it, which allows you to go for a total dry down, which in some cases that's necessary when we're talking succulents, for example, which will allow you to water appropriately without, once it's time to water again, without causing uh, dead spots or hydrophobic areas in your potting soil, that would be the mix you would wanna go with. Sunshine mix number five is interesting. It is 
in relation to the video I did not too long ago on silicon. So essentially it has a product in it called Resilience and it's spelt like this, it's trademarked. All that is, is it's a silicon um, addition and it's great if you are trying to propagate trees, brush, seed starting, that sort of thing. It just has that additional silicon in, silic, silicon in it, which allows you to get the benefits of it. If you're looking for really strong root development and perennial plants, this may be the mix you wanna go for. The issue being it usually is sold in pretty big containers, so you would need a heck of a lot <laughs> that you're trying to start. But if you're in an acreage or a farm or something of that nature, it makes sense. And then the last one is, I think that is relevant to you guys anyways, is the Sunshine Mix number seven. Now this mix is best for those of you that have a continual dry down of the soil. So if you have pots that are in incredibly sunny areas, if you vacation, if you have summer cabins where you only get out on the weekends, um, small containers, you name it, this is what you want to use. It has an absorbent polymer in it, which helps the potting soil retain moisture longer than it would if it just had the classic vermiculite or peat in it, if, if you will. And I did get asked that question by someone, I think it was on the Facebook group page, said, what do I do? My pots are always drying out. Sunshine Mix number seven is your answer because it has that absorbent polymer in it. It is food safe, so don't worry about that. Um, and yeah, that's what you wanna go for. So I hope this helped you navigate the possibilities of potting soil. If you don't wanna use ProMix, if you don't wanna use Sunshine, if you want to look for these features in a consumer grade quality potting soil, just do a quick Google search. Um, polymer edition potting soil. If you want more moisture retention, or if you want higher porosity, just Google higher porosity potting soil, and all you're looking for is larger perlite, in that case of high porosity, or in the case of the uh, polymer, you're looking for the polymer, you guys can navigate it using this video. But the potting soil you choose does truly not matter so long as you can manage the potting soil you have, meaning you're able to water appropriately, you're able to keep up with watering and fertilizing. If you aren't, then you may need to adjust it to a potting soil that fits your lifestyle, and this will allow you to do that. I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that thumbs up, comment down below what potting soil makes you enjoy using, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.